So if you, I'm going to ask you some questions. If you think of what happens at a, in a practice session, what do you typically get your cricketers to focus on? What do you typically do in a practice session? Just explain that to me quickly. Okay. You, I'm talking about one-to-one? Uh, or team, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm talking about one-to-one okay. <clears throat> first. That's the main money, actually. Yeah. Where I earn money. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, what I do actually, uh, my first priority actually, uh, when I see the young boy to check out the body alignment, yeah, stability, yeah, balance, all those things, yeah, like you know, success that's yeah. uh, like more technical type of uh, stuff. Yeah. So once the things, everything in a, a line actually, or you adjust few things. Yeah. And uh, after that, I start giving him challenges. Yeah. Challenges actually, uh, you have to score runs. Uh, this is a field position. You have to back yourself for that shot. Uh, And the type of bowlers actually uh, yeah. consistent, consistently like uh, working on a specific drills. If uh, any case, uh, someone struggling to play over the covers or something like that. Yeah. So uh, analyze actually where, what is the weak uh, point of the player? What is the strength of the player? So we work on those things. Yeah. Uh, when you when you do these challenges, what type mm -hmm. of what type of conversations do you have with him? Is it about, okay, you didn't hit that gap because you didn't get your head here and your hands there. Like, is it that sort of conversation or is it something different? I do everything actually. Sometime if I feel like uh, if uh, something seriously technically around that he can't play at all yeah. that short. So I tell them. Okay. But uh, sometimes I actually tell them you have to back yourself whatsoever. Put in your mind, you have to do it. Yeah. Okay. Like a uh, mind thing. Yeah. Uh, most of guys actually here, uh, what I'm working actually, they are, uh, they are soft. They are mentally soft. They are not uh, mentally very strong because uh, the culture here in Canada. Yeah. So okay. I have to back themselves. They, yeah, mentally a bit soft. What do you mean by that? Mentally soft means uh, they give up a little bit early. They give up too early. Give up in what way? Give up too early, like uh, for if uh, you tell them, yes, you can do it. They yeah. will keep doing it, keep doing it. And they said, no, I can't do. I'm not good. Okay. Like uh, we, we use a word actually here in South Africa, mommy's boy. Okay. Like uh, that type of thing. Okay. Uh, the few players who are brave, who are fit, and it uh, doesn't matter they're technically doing 100% right or not. But uh, if you give, tell them, you have to do it. You need to yeah. back themselves. And uh, I start seeing the results straight away. Okay. Okay, cool. If you think of what you want from your players in, sorry, uh, in matches, what would that be? Matches, I want actually the guys actually, uh, what I give them a challenge actually, I don't want actually they should go to score 100 or they think about scoring big runs. Yeah. I want actually, I I did a lot of sessions and I told them actually, basically how many balls you can bat. If you can bat for 60 balls, you will get maybe five, six bad balls. Those are 24 to 30 runs. And yeah. you can running between the wicket and drop a run and all those things. You can score another 20, yeah. 30 runs. Yeah. So you need to understand who to score runs. That's a totally different way. Yeah. So okay. that, that type of challenges I give them. 
Yeah. Uh, for example, so is that, so is, that is that is that a type of challenge you would do with them? So you I would do. throw them sixty balls. Uh, no, not in the nets. Not like that. In the nets, I go like a twenty-four balls, thirty balls, like this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But uh, in the matches, in the matches, I give them challenges like this. Yeah. And uh, for example, it was a final uh, game, and uh, it was a very big pill. Uh, we need eight runs and overs. So I told them, okay, last two overs you forget about. We will score thirty. So eight overs we need basically fifty runs. It's a run a ball only. You don't have to panic. Yeah. So what happened? We finish a game two overs earlier. Yeah. Just to take out of our pressure like that. So, but during a practice, it's a hard. It's a hard to do the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, cool. What do you want players to focus on in the match? Uh, I want actually, as I said, I want actually the the game awareness. Yeah. You need to understand and read the game as soon as possible. Yeah. And. Uh, Basically, believe in themselves. Well, uh, uh, like uh, responsibility. Yeah. Uh, then, if they are good enough uh, to bat longer, like for example, we play fifty over. I want actually my batsman should look at uh, to bat for hundred balls, not to score hundred runs. Yeah, and take every single opportunity to score runs. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, would you say if you if you said practice versus match? Yeah. How much are they the same? Not much. Not much. Okay, so you get the idea that what you're doing in practice is not what you want them to be busy with in a match. Hmm. Okay? And and I find that 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 is the reason players don't score runs. So they look brilliant in the nets or bowl bowling wise. They look brilliant in the nets and they go in a game and then they don't know what to do. Why is that? Because you're training things that you're not going to do out in the on the field. They separate. They different. Mm. Okay, something I would put on this side that you maybe didn't that 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 maybe I just want to bring to your awareness is personal processes. So that ability of every player to become present. So how do you do that? How and it's it could potentially be different for every single player, but how do they get into that place where they literally just watch the ball and play, while taking all of that above stuff into account. So we've got to have the game awareness. We've got to figure it out. We've got to have the confidence, belief in ourselves, take the responsibility, score runs at every opportunity, um, understand how we're going to score in terms of the run rate and the pressures that we're going to face. And then there, on top of that is, so how do I then become present? So I just play this ball over and over and over and over and over and over again. How do I bowl just this ball over and over and over and over and over again? And so because there's... Yeah, and so because there's this disconnect between the two, because what you do in practice is doesn't. Sorry, this might be practice. Hey, eh? if I lift this end, <laughs> hey, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so <laughs> because what's in practice is not in a match. How can you expect? So you're getting better and better and better at practice at stuff, but you're not getting better at playing the game. You just get a bit. You're just getting better. Getting better at skills getting better at you know playing some challenge but you're not getting better at actually playing the game out there on the field yeah so it's a mind actually as well so need to put some uh, mental pressure in the nets yep 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 uh, because your mind is more active in the matches in a practice 
it's not that much pressure. Exactly. Exactly. You get this. You get this. So I call it, you get, you, we've got to get their mind in the game and we've got to do it in practice already. We've got to activate that type of thinking that we want them to do out on the pitch. We want to be able to activate that more regularly in practice so that they can get better at that while they're using their skill. So the way I explain it is if I want to hit a nail into a plank, how do I hit it in there? There's a way to use a hammer, right? Eh? There's a skill. But if I'm going to nail a tiny little nail into soft wood, how do I do it? Do I still go like this? No, I maybe go no. like, I go like this, but I'm using yeah. the same technique. The technique is yeah. the same. It's maybe just applied a little bit differently. If I want to hit a big nail, big nail <laughs> into a thick piece of wood, how am I going to do it? I'm going to get a bigger hammer. I'm going to swing it. But the technique stays the same. I just apply yeah. it differently. Okay. And so that that so now you're in a net and you're hitting cover drives. But in a game, there's those subtle differences. Sometimes I've got to hit it a bit softer. Sometimes I've got to hit it harder. Sometimes I've got to hit it a bit earlier. Sometimes I've got to hit it a little bit later. Somebody, sometimes I've got to hit it a bit squarer. Sometimes I've got to hit it a bit straighter. And we've got to get their minds to think about this. Not, so now we're not talking about, am I executing the skill correctly? Because that's what practice normally is about. You know, if you think about it, that's what, that's what we normally get people to do in practice. It's more about correct, execute, you know, uh, you, you fell over there. Or you didn't finish yeah. in that position. You didn't have your balance. You know, if we, if we sort yeah. of hamper on the negative side, you could go, yeah. yeah, well done. You kept your balance, you know? So, but we, we're just working on making the skill correct. Correct skill doesn't give runs. Yeah. Correct skill doesn't. So correct skill, what we need in a game is applied skill. The skill must be applied. So yes, okay, cool. Yeah. We know you can hit a cover drive, but can you hit a cover drive to a guy who bowls in a way swinger, slightly back of a length, straighter can you do that can you hit a cover drive against the off spinner on a turning wicket can you do that can you hit a cover drive against the guy who's bowling leggies quick like anil kumble say can you do that mm -hmm. can you hit it more right can you hit it more left and then so i think the problem at times with practice is we just go cover drive cover drive cover drive cover drive okay let's go back foot back foot back foot okay let's go cut 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 let's go pull 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 where I try and very quickly rather get cricketers to a place where they just bat. Oh, Shaq, here's a good ball. Defend it. Oh, here's a drive. Okay, let me drive. Oh, here's a one. I leave it. Oh, here's a cut. Because that's more what you want in the game from a skill point of view is that there's more variety all the time. Mm -hmm. Maybe at higher levels, you want to challenge them more with, okay, cool. It's going to go length, 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 slightly fuller. Are they nailing that full one? Length, 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 slightly shorter. Are they nailing that? Because that's more what's going to happen in a game at that top level. Yeah. You know, because the bowler's skill is going to be better. So we want to try and replicate the skill of the batter or the bowler and match it with what's actually going to happen in a game. And try and challenge them more with that in practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So giving, uh, it's not about a correction only, it's about giving challenges, like how to apply yourself in a match. What would you do in a game situation? That's the yeah. main thing during a practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so to give you an example, some, so I'm assuming you also train a lot on astro wickets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I would do is if I want to say, okay, I'm going to replicate slow uh, uh, Indian wicket here, how do I do it? So I try and actually create that even though I'm on an astro wicket. So I go buy these rubber balls that lose their shape, that you know, bounce a bit and stay low, even though they hit a piece of cement, they slow. So when you hit, hit them, very, very old balls, something like that. Yeah, or very old balls or whatever, you know, you just try and replicate. So, so I think that's the challenge for us. Uh, but what is coming in my mind is different. Uh, what I'm thinking, if someone is uh, someone got serious technical problems, and you have to sort those things out as well, and okay. at the same time you need uh, you want that they perform as well. Yeah. So what is a serious yeah. technical problem? So, 
so what i mean actually listen what i mean actually it's a you have to do in a practice both things correction yeah and those correction what you did how to apply that thing both things together in a practice yeah so what is again what is what is serious technical issue like what is that um, no i'm just talking about uh, genuine so no, like give, course, i'm asking like give me an example for for example uh, body alignment is bad okay so steve smith alistair cook wonky wonky at the back there with the bat all sorts of weird things happening um I'm trying to think who MSD else. MSD very good example very good example The more you get your players to focus on their body the less performance they will have I can almost guarantee you that Hello Hello Oh I don't know what happened there I just disappeared. Yeah, I mean, I, okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, I know what you mean. Like uh, there are a lot of guys who are not technically correct, but they are performing. Yeah. But at some stage, they even Chandler Paul, even those guys. Like even I always give the example of MSB as well. That guy never played cover drive or back foot drive or anything, but he was the more one of the. most successful cricketer one of the most successful captain actually yeah uh i hear you what do you mean but uh, that's not happen in most of cases yeah yeah because because i think as coaches we we drive that technical side so i as as a coach in my personal in my personal opinion i tend to step back a little bit from the technical side and i try and allow more for expression of the skill and only when the skill gets them in trouble so i try and not be i may be a little bit reactive i don't try and be proactive with technique because if you proactive with technique you drive their thoughts to their body if you drive their thoughts to their body performance doesn't happen so i try and be a little bit more um reactive with tech, technical changes so somebody like david warner who right now for the last 6 or so months has been struggling with bowlers coming around the wicket at him that is mm-hmm. a tech there okay thing alarm bells let's figure out what is happening in the mind because there could be a mental thing every time bowlers come around the wicket he goes oh shucks you know and then a whole bunch of negative things or thoughts that don't serve him kicks in so i would check that first If that's not the case, yeah. if that's not the case, then I would then I would yeah. suggest there's potentially a technical thing that we can look at, yeah, you know. But if it's just a player, okay, today the player nicked off, I would not go Monday into the nets and say now we got to work and rework your technique because you nicked off on Saturday. I would not do that. But if they um, nick off, if they nick off consistently over and over and over and over again, different story. Then I might say, hey, I think there's something we need to look at, yeah. and then for me i would always start with the mind like what's the thinking what is it they that they busy feeling 